In this video, we're going to be looking at an example of finding the maximum and minimum values of expressions using equivalent forms. Okay, so it's quite a traditional question that can come after having done, found the equivalent form. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the equivalent form first, then we're going to find the maximum and minimum values of these three expressions. Okay? So the first thing, write 2 sine theta plus 11 cosine theta in the form r sine theta plus alpha, where alpha is an acute angle measured in, in degrees. So this is equal to r sine theta plus alpha. Okay, And we're going to use the compound angle formula to write that as r times sine theta cosine alpha plus cosine theta sine alpha. Now write the alphas to the front, so r cosine alpha sine theta and r sine alpha cosine theta. So whatever's in front of the sine theta here must be what is in front of the sine theta there. So r cos alpha is equal to 2, which implies that cosine alpha is 2 over r. The r sine alpha is what is in front of the cosine, so that must be what the 11 is. So r sine alpha must be 11. So sine alpha must be 11 over r. Seeing as the angle is acute and in degrees, let's draw a little right angle triangle. Here's alpha. If sine alpha is 11 over r, then that's the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's our right angle triangle. We can work out r using Pythagoras. r is the square root of 2 squared plus 11 squared. So 11 squared is 1, 2, 1, plus 4, so 1, 2, 5. So um, 25 goes into that 5 times, so that's 5 root 5. And also we can work out alpha. That will be the inverse tan of 11 over 2. So make sure your calculator is in degrees. Inverse tan of 11 over 2 is 79.7 .7 degrees to one decimal place. OK, and so we have done what was required of us. Writing this in this format would be equal to 5 root 5 sine of theta plus 79.7 .7 degrees to one decimal place. OK, so that's the equivalent forms part. Now, what we need to identify from this and understand is how the curve of sine theta is transformed to this. Now, two transformations are going on. One transformation is a translation, transformation is a translation by the vector minus 79.7. And so the curve is going being shifted 79.7 .7 degrees to the left. Now, when you're thinking about the maximum and minimum values of the sine curve, here's the sine curve, we know that its minimum is at minus 1, its max is at 1. So if you are shifting the graph horizontally, the minimum and maximum values will remain steady. So this curve here, y equals sine of theta plus 79.7 .7 degrees, that has a minimum of minus 1 and a max of 1. This bit here, though, this is a stretch parallel to the y-axis by factor 5 root 5. And so that stretches the curve so that now its minimum would be minus 5 root 5 and its maximum would be positive 5 root 5. So if I'm being asked what's the maximum minimum value of this, the minimum value is negative 5 root 5 and the maximum value is 5 root 5. OK? Right. Now, next question then. What's the maximum and minimum value of 2 sine theta plus 11 cosine theta all squared? OK. Now, what we have here then is 5 root 5 uh, times sine of theta plus 79.7 .7 degrees 
all squared. So this would be equal to, well, the 5 root 5 was root 125. So squaring that is 125. And this sine squared, theta plus 79.7 degrees. Pop in the degree symbol. OK. Now, what's the maximum minimum values of that? Well, the sine squared, we know that sine went between minus 1 and 1. If you're squaring that, minus 1 squared is 1. 1 squared is 1. So actually, the sine curve, when you've squared it, it no longer looks like this. OK? In actual fact, because you're squaring it, the curve would actually look something like this. Because actually the curve cannot now be negative because you're, it's squaring all of the values. So this is actually going between 0 and 1, the sine squared. And then when you're multiplying it by 125, that means that the minimum will still be 0, but the maximum will be 125. So the minimum is 0, and the max is 125 for part B. Last but not least, we have 40 over 20 plus 2 sine theta plus 11 cosine theta. Now we know what that equivalent is equivalent to, so that's what we worked out initially. So we've got 40 over 20 plus 5 root 5 sine of theta plus 79.7 degrees. We know that this part, the sine, goes between minus 1 and 1. So really what we're investigating is 40 over 20 plus 5 root 5 and 40 over 20 minus 5 root 5. OK? So 40 divided by 20 plus 5 root 5 is 32 take away 8 root 5 over 11. That's with it. it's a simplified rationalised denominator. This is approximately 1.28. 40 over 20 take away 5 root 5 is 32 plus 8 root 5 over 11. And so that's approximately 4.54. So what you're seeing here is that the minimum value is actually this one. And the maximum value is actually this one. The curve is bounded between these two values. OK? So what you need to be careful here is that you kind of get used to saying, ah, oh, well, when it's uh, when sine is positive, so positive 1, then I'm getting its maximum. But that's not actually what's happening here, because the denominator is being made larger, which makes the fraction smaller. And when you're doing the subtraction, you're making the denominator smaller, which makes the fraction bigger. OK? So it's actually the other way around to how you would have initially perhaps expected. But this is how you can find the maximum and minimum values of questions that look like this.